Hey folks, it is Monday, so that means that it's time for the next episode of the Quintuple M, the Monday Mr. Money Mustache Motivation. Today is episode 41. I am taking this blog post from his post on August 1st, 2011, titled, A Millionaire is Made 10 Bucks at a Time. As always, I will have the link to this blog post in the description box below if you want to go and check out this article in its entirety and see um, what the Mr. Buddy Mustache readers have commented on the article. I have a feeling that I probably will need to hear this one today. I know that it's August 5th now and I still haven't put out my August um, budget preview. I plan on doing that this week, but I've already done a lot of spending that wasn't particularly budgeted for ahead of time and I'm feeling kind of guilty about that today. So it's kind of ironic that today is the a millionaire is made 10 bucks at a time article. Whenever I go through and pick out articles for these episodes that I make, I just look through all of his posts from um, chronological order and I go through and I pick different ones that I have liked. So I didn't really realize that this was the one that was going to be for today after I bought all the stuff that I did in the past few days. So this will be a good reminder for me as well. So we'll dive right in. <clears throat> a millionaire is made 10 bucks at a time. I was at a party recently and someone walked up to start a conversation. It turned out this person had secretly been reading this blog and now he had a few questions for me. I understand now that even a family can retire on well under a million dollars, but that is still a lot of money, yet your blog talks mostly about small things like saving $70 a month on electricity or gasoline or coffee. Aren't these two different universes of savings that don't even relate? It's a good question, of course. It is this perception of small versus large amounts of money that is the downfall of most of us. It drives many to fantasize about lottery winnings, since that's the only way to become a millionaire if you're not a rapper or a greedy corporate CEO, right? And meanwhile, we buy $9.75 bottles of Kirin at the sushi restaurant and $12 movie tickets to see Cars 2 with the kids in the movie theater and drive 20 miles per gallon vehicles around town for relatively short trips. And we don't become millionaires very quickly at all. The solution to this is a change of mindset. It's time to start getting excited about 10 bucks again. When I was a kid, I had to cut an enormous and hilly half acre lawn by pushing a fume spewing 21 inch lawn boy for two hours. That was five bucks. Then I excitedly waited a week so the grass would grow and I could repeat this process to earn another five bucks. That's 10 bucks. $10 will still buy about nine pounds of delicious, kick-ass, nutritious, muscle-building rolled oats. Still one of my favorite foods today, despite being able to afford fancier things. Or two gallons of organic milk. Or enough gasoline to drive over 100 miles in a good car. Weeks worth of regular driving. Or enough natural gas to provide hot water for showers and dishwashing for a family for several weeks. Ten bucks is a lot of money, so you need to respect it. $10 bills are not just food stamps or amusement park coupons that you fork over by the dozen to get restaurant meals, smokes, strippers, drinks, tourist attraction, admission, and assorted domestic services. Each 10 is a critical brick in the early retirement castle you are building. If you save $796 per week for 10 years and get a 7% compounded investment return after inflation, you'll have $600,000 sitting around ready to party for you. As you can see in the footnote section below, that is more than enough to start a nice early retirement, especially if your house is paid off. Maybe more than twice as much as you need, but since we do conservative calculations here at Triple M, let's roll with that number. Let's say you've got two income earners working together. Now each one has to save only $398 a week. There are 112 waking hours in each week. Each person has to make 40 successful $10 decisions each week, or one $10 decision every 2.8 waking hours. Some of these decisions can be made automatically, like owning a less expensive car and driving it less, $100 per week per person. Using less electricity and other utilities, $25. Eating most office meals without going out to lunch, $50. 
not having cable TV, and in general, spending less time in retail establishments, $25. Now the remaining number is only $200 a week. Most zero savings people blow dramatically more than $200 a week in just random purchases. Spas, yoga, fingernail treatments, bottles of wine, six packs of beer, shoes, electronic gadgets, ice cream cones, movie, movie tickets, plastic crappy toys for toddler birthday parties, books from Amazon.com instead of your local library, lawn care services, whatever. These, combined with the automatic savings above, are the $10 decisions that make the difference between the typical broke and indebted person and the mustachian early retiree. If you start respecting your 10s at age 20, you'll be retired by 30. Now, before the whiners start chiming in and saying it's no fun to spend zero money, you must realize that there's plenty of wiggle room for luxuries in my numbers. Each person is saving $400 per week or about 20 k per year on top of their house payments. Yet many of us have take home pay of over $30,000 per year, sometimes way over that amount. There is plenty of money to go around in this situation and I'm even giving you a single family home to live in and a relatively quick 10 year sprint to retirement. If you have any issues with my numbers, make your own adjustments and the results will still be amazing. But even with all this room for indulgence, it is important to keep your priorities in order. Otherwise, you are combining luxury with fantasy. For example, it is absolutely ridiculous to buy even your first bottle of wine or restaurant meal if you do not yet have a good bi bicycle and a bike trailer. I don't. <laughs> it is insane to buy a luxury car even if your house isn't paid off yet. If you still have student loans, get them paid off before you splurge on that iPhone or overseas vacation. Nope. <laughs> you can still have these frivolous and fancy pants things, some of which I admit to owning myself, but you need to have a rational definition of can I afford it. Part of the $10 philosophy is that you must pay for the current luxuries in your life before you start adding additional luxuries. Can you tell I love that word? I'd also suggest that since luxury spending is primarily for pleasure, you could try doing much of your purchasing for other people. Perhaps counterintuitively, it is proven that most of us get more pleasure by buying a necessity that really helps someone else. For example, a bike for a family member who can't afford one, compared to yet another luxury for ourselves, a $100 hairstyle or an upgraded china set for our yacht's main dining room. So there you have it, the way to become a retired millionaire using just those useless paper scraps in your wallet by changing the way you think about them. All right, y'all, so what do you think of this one down below? Let me know, because obviously there's some things that uh, I am doing here that are things that Mr. Money Mustache would not agree with. Um, there tends to be a couple different uh, ways of thinking when it comes to this fire movement, I've noticed. Uh, there's some people who are heavily on the frugal side of the movement. Um, Mr. Money Mustache runs along those lines. He wants you to save as much money as possible. Really take a look at what you value having in your life and focus on that. And then, you know, invest the difference. And then there's the earn more camp that really don't mind as far as spending five or ten dollars here or there as long as you're focusing on generating more income so that way you can still have a high savings rate. Well, the reason that I tend to sort of go on the side of Mr. Money Mustache is that before I started my entire financial journey here um, of just trying to get out of debt and learning more about finances in general, beginning to use a budget, all of that sort of thing, before I started all of that, I definitely was a death by a thousand cuts type of person. I would go to Taco Bell two or three times a week before going to work just because it was easier. I'd stop for a Starbucks coffee and not think about it. Oh, it's only five bucks, you know, here and there. It doesn't add up. But y'all, when I started really trying to get out of debt, then I started to realize a, where all of my spending was going and how much those five bucks here and there really add up. And B, how tight my budget was. Um, it felt really restrictive when I first got started and started cutting out all of these five and $10 things. 
And when I first got started on my debt-free journey, I only had about 200 extra bucks a month to put towards debt, which is more than what some people have, so I'm not trying to complain, but I realized that those five and ten dollar purchases were adding up and it was really eating into the already sort of small margin that i had to throw at my debt so if i didn't make some big changes then i was going to be in debt for forever <laughs> so yeah i am more in the camp of um both really when it comes right down to it i think that one should try to optimize their finances as much as they can and then two, yes, focus on making some more money. So that way you'll have even more to invest or even more to throw at your debt to get out of it. More money to pay off your house, whatever your financial goals are. I'm kind of in that camp where if we're going to optimize our spending, let's optimize our earning as well. So yeah, let me know what you think about that down below. Um, yeah, this trip to uh, Scotland I'm taking and the frivolous spending that I've already done this month would be something that uh, Mr. Money Mustache frowns upon, but I don't know. The way that I look at it now, I do have a little bit more margin in my budget than when I first started this debt-free journey. And even though I did spend some money this week, typically I really don't spend a ton every month on just frivolous things. And I'm still saving and investing as well. And I'm still paying off debt. And I'm still going to Scotland with my mom. So yeah, you know, balance for me. I think that's the key word here. And everybody has to define what their own balance is. We all, you know, have different levels of spending to feel comfortable. So yeah, let me know what you think of this article down below. I'll see y'all later this week for the August budget preview. Thanks for watching. Bye.